okay. I'm just keeping my volume a little less so that I, you won't get my echo. So you can see my screens, both of you. Yeah. Uh, so let's start the class. I hope the session is recording. Hi. Uh, from today we are going to see a new topic. It's called as uh, activity management. Something uh, new in SAP CRM. So this is the activity management. And the objective of this uh, activity management is uh, to know what are the what is the activities in your daily day uh, activities in organization. Anything happens, you are attending a customer call or sending an email or you are doing some task or you are uh, talking to the customer or you are fixing an appointment. All these things are categorized as activities. And for these activities, SAP CRM has a functionality called activity management. So this is just like how your transaction is like a sales order or a service order or a compliance or a returns or a contract, how you uh, control in the transaction type. In the same manner for business activities also, you have a configuration under the transaction type that you will be seeing. And in this activity, there are several new functions like survey integrations, that is you can integrate questionnaires or feedbacks in this transaction whenever you are talking to the customer, you can take feedback from the customer, I mean immediately in the transaction itself. And you have group pair integration also. Group pair integration is something uh, new in this topic where uh, for example you can integrate your Microsoft Outlook and SAP CRM so that whenever you have, when you are fixing appointment in Microsoft Outlook, automatically it will be shown in SAP CRM calendar. In the same way when you fix appointment in SAP CRM calendar, then automatically it will be shown in the Microsoft Outlook. Not only in Microsoft Outlook, I mean, most of the uh, uh, cases uh, you use. I mean, any any system where you can do integration like Microsoft Outlook, so like Lotus Notes, and Outlook 2003, 2007. There are several tools. I mean, uh, for group uh, supported tools. So those things you can integrate with the SAP CRM. So these things we'll be seeing it. So let's see the scenario first. What is a business activity? How it is used? Uh, before that, I just want to check uh, what I talk and the screen moving is the same? No, it's, it's the same. Yeah, I mean, okay, because I need to adjust my way of talking as well. Okay, so the scenario is very simple. As I told you earlier, using different options in SAP CRM, you want to create and monitor various Activities. activities here, as I told you, as examples like sending email is an activity, fixing appointment is an activity, interaction log, whatever you chat with the customer, you can record it as the activity and task. Those various activities you can create and monitor it. That's the main functionality of this business activity. And even you can also create follow-up activities. Say for example, you have created a sales order. From the sales order, using that create follow-up function, you can create an activity. Say like appointment for example. So like you have created an order for a customer, again you are fixing an appointment for in detail you want to push some other product. So that you are privately going, setting an appointment to meet the customer and to explain some other product like a cross selling. So in these business scenarios you can use this activity as a create follow for an order. You will be seeing this. Then for enable all these functionalities, we will be checking under the customizing setting. What are the customizing which needs to require? for enabling these functions. One moment, I just close other uh, the Internet Explorers.
just one minute, I will just close other uh, explorers. Yeah, here we go. So let's see uh, one by one. First, let's see what are the types of activities. Before you try to know the activity management, you should know what are the activities you can actually perform in SAP CRM function. So when you categorize the types of activities, there are four types you can see. There is activities might be a telephone call, that is an interaction, a customer visit, for example, when you are visiting the customer, you can uh, uh, record all those things as a customer visit or for example you need to do some general preparatory tasks say like you want to create a presentation for your customer meet all those things come under the task level and say for example you want to set a reminder for an appointment you can set exit appointment for uh, like a business related calls or private calls everything you can set and if you want to send an email you can set so all these things come under the activities so these are the four types of activities in SAP CRM so in SAP CRM, as I told you, there are four different types of activities. This is an interview question. What are the activities available in SAP CRM? So there are, in general, there are four types of business activities. Those are appointment and interaction log, emails and tasks. So from a technical point of view, when I want to specify, there are two categories you can split in this activity, so type of activity. So those are called as business activities, the first one is, second one is called as task. So within the type of activities, you can split the activities into two ways. One is business activities, another one is called as tasks. So this is also an interview question, what's the difference between business activity and a task? There, are, there might be a question in the interview. So it's, it's very simple to explain. So from a technical point of view, there are two leading business transaction categories for activities. That is, one is business activity and task. Let's uh, side by side, we will see in the screen so that we can understand better. So I'm taking directly to SPRO. So as we know, even these business activities are also controlled under the transaction types. So we are going to the transaction level, that is defined transaction type. basic settings, define transaction types. So let's choose two things. Let's see an appointment first, then we'll see a task. Okay? So I'm just choosing appointment first. And go to details. When I choose your appointment, here the leading transaction category sources business activity. So that is what here. A business activity that is coming under one area, that is a leading business activity. That is for example appointment. So appointment come under this business activity. The same way for example, when we see some other say like interaction log. I'm choosing interaction log now. That is also one of the activity. I'm going to the details. Here also you can see the leading transaction category shows us business activity. Let's take another example. I think the slide we have seen uh, some more like, uh, for example, what we have seen. Okay, email we have seen, right? Email, that's the email. Let's say incoming email. I'm going to details. So here also you can see the leading transaction category as business activity. So what I'm trying to show you is, in business activity itself, there are two types. One is called as activities, as I showed you, appointment, interaction log, and the incoming email, all these things are called as activities. And there is one more thing called task. Let's choose this task, for example. I'm going to details. Here, the leading transaction category shows us task, it's not a business activity. So that's the difference.
difference from a technical point of view there are two leading business transaction categories for activities so it can be a business activity that is a leading business category or it can be a task so what's the difference between these both why a business activity has a different uh, uh, we uh, choose leading ca business category and uh, for some reason we choose task as a business leading category so here is the reason for a business activity when you see in the business activity front screen I mean when you are entering a business activity transaction for example setting an appointment or setting an interaction log or sending emails it contains information about the interaction with the business partner on a particular date so this is the main important thing in any business activity when you choose if there is a field for business partner on a particular date then it has to be a business activity okay but when you come to the task it contains information about the activities that are one or more employees have to complete by a particular date so here the surprising thing is there is no business partner involved in this transaction so this is just an activity given to employees of the organization where they need to perform for a particular date say like uh, uh, need, for example you have to prepare a presentation by tomorrow so that is a task for you a manager has set you a task that need to prepare a presentation for tomorrow's meeting that is a task so here there is no business partner involved so this presentation can be shown to different customers as per your business requirement so in those examples you can use this as a task but for example in a business activity for example when you are fixing an appointment for appointment means you need to have one side from the company side an employee and another side a customer so customer means you need to have this business partner right the same way when you are uh, interacting with the customer and uh, for that also to whom you are talking you need to address the business partner the same way when you are sending email you need to address the business partner so let's see an example for business activities and tasks in the front let's open a screen I'm opening a new session go to crmd underscore order okay so here I am going to show you some existing business activities. Let's say this is a business activity to be fine and here we have the categories. Under the categories you can see several categories. Customer call, preparation, memo, there are several uh, uh, business activities has been categorized. It can be I mean these uh, activities can be either leading transaction can be a business activity or it can be a leading transaction can be a task. Depends upon the difference what I have shown. Let's take few examples. Let's take an appointment here. Okay, I'm choosing an appointment. So let's find out if there any appointment in the system. I'm choosing this one. In the same way, I'm opening another screen. I'm just opening another screen to open a task to see the difference between the both the screens. Here in the search, I'm keeping this as a business activity, find, and under the category, I'm choosing, for example, task, and start. So there is no ta task here. Okay. Let's say customer visit, request task. Let's take a memo.
Okay, I don't find much uh, task example, so I'll just try to create one. I'm going to the business activity leading act here and come here. Let's check for task. So down you can see the leading activity task. So here let's take task. Just want to show you the screen, how the screen looks like. So this is a task screen, how does it look? And before that we have opened a business activity screen. Okay. So here if you see the difference, the first difference is when you see the category, this is so this appointment. Okay, and when you when I uh, compare with this with the task, here is the sources task. And the second difference is the business activity. As I studied just now, a business activity contains information about the interaction with the business partner on a particular date. So if you see the business activity, for example, appointment is a business activity. So here, I mean, the appointment is media store visit. That is, uh, they are keeping a visit to for product launch. So they are having the customer as 3271. This is the activity partner. So here they won't say it as a business partner, they will say it's activity partner. So for this activity, he is the partner. So he's the business partner. And he has a contact person 461. And person responsible is 401001. You see, these two people are working for uh, the company itself, you can see. And this is the customer. So here you have a business partner. And you have a particular date also, right? And the text here is media store visit product launch. But when you see in the task, I'm in the task screen. Let's say call the customer. So it's a general customer from the list. So it means that there is a list. In that list, there are number of customers which you need to call. That's the description I'm setting. And I'm setting the employee responsible. Here we have set our user itself as the employee responsible. And I'm setting a note that call each customer in the list by end of today. So this is a task I'm assigning for this employee responsible. Getting? So here there is no business partner. Only you have the date and you have the specification what you need to do, that's it. So that is categorized as task. A task contains information about the activities that one or more employees have to complete by a particular date. Okay. So now you've got a difference between what is called business activity and a task which are the both uh, two leading business transaction categories. Let's go further. So let's see how a structure looks like, how a structure of an activity uh, looks like. So when you see a structure of an activity, it has two things. One is called details. Out of the details, you have several fields like description field, who is the contact person, a date and time, a category, some important status, there are several things. And there are some other assignment blocks. So let's show you, let's uh, choose this business activity appointment. So under the appointment if you see first thing it shows about the description. So there is a description and it shows about the category. Okay. And you have the date specific. And you have this partner detail also. And in GUI you have these options to close it, compress the data just by clicking this data. Just like a closer option. You can just click it and you can open it also when you want. the same manner below you can see details and you have some few tabs under this. So let's say some of the tabs like uh, you can uh, enter the location at what location you want to fix the appointment 
and uh, what is the priority of this appointment? Is it a medium or it should be high or should be low? You can set it. And what is the status? Current status? It's open. And uh, any result you want to? What is the main main reason for this uh, meeting? You can set. And what is the goal of the appointment? <coughs> then also you can set. For example, you are selling some product or you want to place some order or say like you want to get some service fulfillment. Any reason? I mean, that is the goal. I mean, for meeting the customer. So all those things can maintain under this detail screen. So that's why it says detail screen. Under the detail screen, you can see descriptions, contact persons, date and time, category, status, importance, like priority, like priority. You can see. Apart from this, you can see some tabs in CRM web client user interface. Those are called as assignment blocks. In GUI, it is called as tabs, like borders, text. Questionaries, relationships, attachments, organizations. So in each tab, you have specific fields. Say for example, partner means who are the partners responsible for this appointment. So all the partners' names will be automatically determined by the system. We will see this how it's getting determined in the next class. Important determination. And the same with text. Text we have seen like text management. The same thing is apply applicable. So for this transaction type, there should be a uh, text profile, right? So from the text, you will be having a lot of text types, and these are the text types for this transaction type: note, preparation, report, business, partner, correspondence. So as you know, if it is clicked from note, I mean, uh, you know, I mean, uh, this text can be come from your master data, or can be come from your uh, product side, or can be come from another transaction. So this we have we how to do this customizing part. The same way, some few questions you have, like survey. When you are meeting with a customer, you can open this transaction, and you can ask some feedbacks. So that is called questionnaires. Say like, I mean, how well the, the uh, service was, and uh, do you like to uh, place more orders, and uh, for next three months, uh, how much uh, you can place orders. Like six more small questions, surveys you can take, so that it will be useful for you for future planning of your organizations. So we'll be doing an exercise on this. And then we have relationships. So there are several tabs. I mean, each tab has its own uniqueness. So we can just relate some of the objects, uh, say like uh, some of the products you can relate for this appointment. What are the things you need to talk? You can just relate it here. And the attachments, you can uh, attach some of the documents, required documents, where you can show it to the customer. You can just attach it. So this is actually you just think in such a way that you are meeting the customer, for example, and you have this transaction also. Or your interaction agent is talking to the customer and she's opening an uh, appointment uh, transaction screen where she's inputting plus she's talking with the customer. So in that uh, functionality, this, this will be very useful. And uh, you can see organizations, I mean, in, from which organization this appointment needs to be created. So that also will be taken into consideration. And dates, as you have seen in the last class about the date management, the same uh, logic applies here. So we have several date types, we have durations, and how you are calculating through date rules. And there is one more called action tab. This will be seeing the uh, next class, what is called action keys. So there are several tabs available under your business activity transaction. This is what I'm showing you. So like, like I show you in GUI, the same way we can see it in CRM web client user interface also. That's only a CRM web client user interface. Let's open slash o CRM underscore UI. Just want to show you the same screens. How does it looks in the CRM web client user interface? So this would take a little time to get open. I'm entering in username and password.
I told you, I mean, you have a little patient when you are working with the on the client. First thing you get is to select the business roles. So let's say we are taking sales for example. So here we need to open an activity so we can go to activities. So let's click activities. Let's open the same activities. So here we have this activity. This display appointment media store visit. Let's say I am choosing the activity partner number for making a search under the activity. So here you can make a search like a category is for, we know the category is, here is appointment. So I am choosing here the appointment as category. So it's appointment, yeah, I am choosing this as appointment and uh, for example, account ID, that is the activity partner. For activity partner, I'm choosing this as three two seven one. This much is sufficient, but I'm just entering more data. Person responsible, that is employee responsible ID. I'm putting as four zero one zero. I'm just making a search. So you got one specific transaction as per the search. So that is nothing but I just chosen this actually partner and I chosen the person responsible and I chosen the category in the search and I got the result, exact result. So this is the transaction which we were seeing in the GUI. Now I am showing you in the web client. Let's choose this. So here you can see the screens little bit changed, I mean not like GUI, it has its own uh, uh, structure. So you can see the description here, you can see the dates and you can see the importance like medium, priority, what is the status and what is the category and uh, here you can see who are the contact person and what is the account that is the uh, customer uh, name, media store and who is the employee responsible name and that's the text part which is showing us notes here in GYT shown as text and below that you can see partners here it shows us attendees so all these things called as assignment blocks you can close it or you can open it these are called as assignment blocks <coughs> and this is the time duration the appointment has been set from 10 a.m. to 12 15 p.m. for the Employee, employee Perry Johnson. This also you can see in a graphical way. <coughs> Sorry. So there are several transactions, I mean assignment block. This is what it shows in the document. Assignment blocks. There is notes, organizations, accent, attendees, dates, attachments. So here I am showing only few. If you want to see more means you can uh, just go to the personalized box.
So here you have two things. One is called displayed assignment blocks. This is the displayed assignment block which you are seeing, which you are able to see. Okay. So here also we have check box. So this is display expander. When this is a check box is checked, then you can see the display as an expandable display. Otherwise, it will get closed. Let's see you have some other uh, assignment blocks like questionnaires, dates, organizational date, for example. I just these are available assignment blocks, but which is not shown, which is not displayed, which is hidden. So I want to make them to be displayed. So I'm just clicking all these selected things and click this move to right button. So all those selected things will come here. And if you want to make it up, for example, I want to make the questionnaires up, select it. Sorry, uh, I want to make the questionnaire to come up in the assignment block. Just clicking the personalize button again. Here, if you see, means right now you can see the questionnaires, all those things in the downward. This takes time. Okay, let's let's go back and uh, do it again. See now you can see questionnaires here. Now I want this questionnaires, this assignment block to come up. There are several assignment blocks, chain history, transaction history, schedule in action, reference objects, organizational data. These are assignment blocks which are available now. Earlier it was not available. So I want this questionnaire to come up. So you can do this under this personalization setting. Just simple drag. I mean, uh, just select this one particular questionnaire and click this up button so that it will come up and in which level you want to keep it you can keep say for example next to notes I want this questionnaire so here I want so next to notes I have saved it So now you see the transaction, general data, notes, below notes, the first thing you can see is, below notes you can see is questionnaires. So this is how it works. I just click the, uh, there was a survey, customer satisfaction survey, so I clicked it to see when, is there any specific survey on it. Uh, let it come then, I mean it's taking time, so we we'll see uh, next thing. So in this you came to know how the structure of an activity is. So when you see a structure in GUI, you have specific thing like for a business activity, you'll have an activity partner, you have dates. But for a task, when you see a task, you'll have only the employee responsible and the dates. There won't be any business partner. This is the first difference you have seen. Then if you see the structure, 
more or less the structure of the task and the business activity are similar. Only this business partner field won't be available. So if you see both the screens, all the tabs, everything will be the same as how it is in the business activity and in the task itself the same thing will be there, the structures. So the description is the main field, category is another main field and for business activities leading transaction you need to have this activity partner then you have this priority I mean you can prioritize your activity like medium high low and you can set the status also and there is one more thing called goals you can set your goals like I mean for this appointment is meant for what to close the order or for cost selling or for maintaining the, I mean introducing a new customer so you should know the goals while you are meeting the customer so all those things you can maintain it and you can set some private appointments also so that no one can see this appointment select like private I mean, this is actually grayed out in the customer think if you make a control you can make this as a private so that only the persons who are in the responsible persons who are in the appointment only they can see it the other people cannot see the appointment So this is a uh, simple uh, example. Activities are used to record business activities and tasks such as activities that are carried out on behalf of the company. That is, task is something which is happening within the organization. Okay, within employees to employees, within managers to employees, or within employees to managers. Those are called as task. But for activities means which is something recorded. Business partners. So that let's come to activities. A start date and a finish date. If you if you want to create a business activity, then you should have a business partner, a start date and a finish date. But it is not required for the uh, uh, uh. You use tasks, tasks like a selection, interaction. Task can be public or private. You can for setting a task for a test public. Say like you are creating a task only for a specific employee, so that the employee can prepare some questions for private. So the task will be only able to see this example of the some task like uh, setting reminder or uh, for customer presentations preparation of the customer presentation these are comes to the task so from here we'll be seeing the customizing activity whatever I have shown you is the uh, front end system where the agents or the uh, users will be entering the transaction both in task and activity but from now, I mean, uh, sort of consult uh, perspective, how these are controlled, the, those things we are going to study now. So the first thing before, uh, when you create customizing activities for these things, a few things you should know. You should know in this activity management, you know what is called transaction type. We are very much know. I mean, from two days plus, we have seen a lot of transaction types. And uh, there is a new thing called category. I have shown you this category part in the transaction. Today, say, like, for example, appointment categories and you have something called class this is one thing you need to understand class so how does the whole uh, system work is in this SPRO there are some SAP standard class say like class means for example let's take interaction log this is a class. So 
So under this, under this class, I can say like this, under this class comes the category. Okay, under this class it comes the category. For example, the category can be appointment task or for example incoming call. You are calling the customer. This is the category, incoming call. And from this category, you will be assigned to a specific transaction type. So this is the simplest way to keep in mind for customizing in the business activity. So first thing is you should know what is the class mean. And the second thing is the category under which uh, it is assigned to a class and another category is assigned to a transaction type. Let's see all those things now. Now we are going to the customizing part in SPR room. Let's take a business activity. Let's take a appointment for example. So this is a transaction type. Okay. That is here just for our understanding. Transaction type. Zero 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 zero. This is a transaction type. That is appointment, it refers to the description. And I am going to assign it of business transaction categories. So when I click this, it will show the leading business category. Here the leading business category is business activity. So that's what it says. The first thing is business transaction attribution characteristics, that is leading business transaction category and profiles and procedures. So I am selecting this, the first one that is appointment transaction type. Once again, I'm going to details. When you click this details like sales order or service order, the same way for this transaction type you have several controls like a description, what is the leading transaction category business activity. And no change document. You know no change document, right? It is history is recorded or not for this we have this control. And below you can see profiles. Like for this transaction type, there is like so likewise there are several it's going down, separate number. So just which you can see opening the how three four and another team. This is transactivity immediately. This way I option directions the transaction you can see. So here categories, goals, priorities, and priorities. And just for example, let's say you want to maintain a goal. So double click on it. And here there are several entries already maintained. SAP standard entries and there are some customized. So if you, if you want to create, you can just copy a specific one and get copy so like this. For example, YY one four. So let's say YYY. Something like goals you can set is like uh, upselling and cross. Uh, just, just give me a few minutes. Someone has come. Just, just give me a few minutes. I'll just come back.
ಹಲೋ ಪ್ರವೀಣ್ ಹಲೋ Yeah, I'm back. So we have saved a, a specific goal. Going back. <coughs> If you want to see the goal now, we can see our goal. Let's go it again. Maintain goals. Choose position. So I set the goal as y y y and enter so we have set a goal ready for upselling okay likewise if you want to set some priorities you can set the priorities <coughs> sorry so here you have very high high medium low these are the sap standard priorities if you want to have one more you can give a new entry give a number for example 6 and give in the description as mm, okay very very high or let's say immediate okay this one priority i'm giving is safe let's go back <coughs> so i have set a goal i have set a priority and this is the place you can maintain categories also categories you no need to maintain i mean it's already in sap standard you have all the categories maintained there is no way i mean they have specifically mentioned for each uh, uh, the business activities whatever happens in the organization and everything they have put it in sap crm system so you no need to create any activities but even though it's uh, good to know so like whenever you want to create an activity ca sorry category 
you need to give a specific category code and you need to specify the class. So this is what I was telling you. The class. So whenever you are creating a category, whenever you are creating a category, you need to assign a specific class. So this is what is shown in the screen. Let's take for example 0001 is the category that is for example visit. Okay? And for this the class is interaction log. So likewise there are several class phone call, letter, meeting, internet, appointment, email, task. So you need to choose the specific class what do you want for your category. So let's take for example appointment means you have a class for appointment so you need to choose that one. You should not choose the email. I mean you will be expecting to write appointment but you will be choosing as email means it's a Ill illogical uh, business process it will be. So likewise you need to choose as per the class you need to categorize your category. <coughs> Let's see. Let us create a category and let us create a transaction type. Let us create a senior transaction type. Let us create a goal and let us create a maintain priorities of dates. And we can see in the front end scene, I mean uh, what all the thing what all the changes we have done, we can see it in the years uh, testing. Let's let's uh, do this as an exercise. So what I'm gonna do is first thing we have maintained goals. Okay, let let's keep this as a goal, for example. The goal we have set is Y Y Y. That is what up upselling, right? Yeah. Upselling, this is our goal. Okay. Now priority it should be immediate. That's what I'm doing. And category, we'll create now one category. Let's focus, say like uh, we are doing a, for example, we are doing a, a appointment category. So maintain, go to new entries. I can choose this appointment itself and copy us. Here, let's take why, why, why? And the description is why, why appointment. Just for reference, I'm just uh, stating this is why, why. But in the project, you have a specific code for it. You can maintain that. And class also, I'm maintaining. I should maintain appointment only. I should not maintain other things like interaction log, phone call. You should maintain appointment. Enter and save. So I have created a category as YYY. See, whenever you do any customizing, please open a notepad or Excel and uh, please uh, save down your uh, entries because it will be confusing in later for what you are maintaining. So we have created a category, we have created a goal and we have created a priority. Okay. So let's go to the uh, transaction type. Let's create a transaction type. A new transaction type, I mean to say fresh so for the basic settings define transaction types <coughs> okay so the use uh, opening some very has been used this one okay. so we are already in a transaction type uh, screen so define transaction types Let's choose, for example, let's take transaction type 0000, zero, zero, zero. copy us, and here let's give a new transaction ID YYYY. References YYY is the short description. This will be the long description YY appointment. Okay, so 
let's let's uh, all the other things uh, let's maintain the same thing because uh, this won't affect our testing. I'm pressing enter. And save. So I have created a transaction type now. Our transaction type is this is the business transaction type we have created. Transaction type is yyyy this yy appointment is the description. Okay. So I'm selecting this now. Going to the assignment of business transaction category. Here is business leading businesses business activity only because we have copied from the standard transaction type 0000, that's why all the entries are copied. So from here going to the customizing header, so under the customizing header, I am choosing my category, that is we have created our own category, it's YY appointment and calendar, yes I want the calendar, private appointment allowed, yes or no, for example, I am just removing this and priority, let's make it immediate. So what all the customizing we have done, now it's showing immediate and goal, it is for upselling, this appointment is for. So we have created our own upselling here, so upselling, press enter <coughs> and save. Okay, now let's check the channel also, this should be our channel, so GUI is there. So now we can go for testing. Just to test that we have created a new business activity. This is the default appointment. This is the new business activity. So whenever you want to create a business activity, it will take the system will take into consideration all the customizing whatever we have done. Let's open a new. Let's go back. So going to the CRMD underscore order, transaction. Going to business transaction. Create. So our leading business category is business activity. So under this, let's see. Oh my god, we have several appointments. Okay, it's here. Why why appointment? This is our appointment. Double click. So once I click create why why appointment, I can give the descriptions. Let's say appointment for upselling. And if you see the category, automatically the category has taken our created category. That is why why why. And. Uh, Activity partner, if you want, you can choose anyone, 3273 for example. And the contact person, hope I remember one contact person. Yeah, let's take the same one, 461. Let's take the person responsible also the same one. Okay. And here the priority automatically is come as immediate because we have made a settings under the default to come as immediate for the priority. The same way when you see the goals, the goal is meant for upselling. So this appointment is meant for the customer to try to sell something more before <coughs> see here we can set some notes preparations so what I'm just giving a text I mean now uh, I am the manager I'm giving a task I mean I'm giving a business activity for this employee 
to meet this customer and have given some text I mean so that the employee can refer to I have said preparation for upselling product maintaining the attachment so under the attachment I will maintain some documents related to some products which which he needs to try to upsell to the customer that is he needs to push those products to sell it to the customer so in this way this activity is useful so just showing you a complete customizing on this so we know this maintain categories goals priorities how to customize and this activities is mostly used under this follow-up activities a simple example is let's say you have created an order so under the order you have the customer you have the product you are maintained okay so once you save from the order you can create a follow-up activity like a customer visit for example I'm just not saving this thing back. Open a order. <coughs> For order means we need to choose the sales part. I think we know a specific order, so let's try this. <clears throat> so this is an existing order. So from this order, I can create a business activity as a follow-up. That's what I'm showing. Let's change this. By clicking this, you can go to the change mode from display mode to the change mode for the order. Okay, now it's editable. You can close the screen or search screen. So now uh, the customer is there, 3273. We have some products. Now I want to create one more business activity for some appointment to meet the customer. So you can go to this business transaction. You can go as follow up transaction. Click this. So from here, so you can choose the business activity, which are say for example appointment. I want to create an appointment. So automatically it's allowing me to create an appointment and even though if you see the activity button I have not entered, it's automatically getting copied from the sales order what is the activity portal that is sold to party and who is the contact person. Everything is getting copied automatically. So that's the part called follow up activities. So when you create an order from here you can go for customer visit. Likewise I have shown you the appointment part. The same way when you create a contract let's take uh, contract is getting end by two weeks. So before the two weeks if you want to give you a call using the contract and directly go for a follow up activity to create a telephone call as a business activity. So whenever the time comes, the date and time, it, the system will automatically give a pop-up that uh, need to give a call to the customer as a business activity. So like this also you can set as reminders. <coughs> Sorry. So these things if you want to copy control, I mean this copying the sold to party from up order to the when you are getting a business activity is getting copied automatically. Those controls you can do it under this level. We have a copy control. This one, a copy control area. Yeah. Copy control for business transactions. So under this level, for example, define copy control for transaction types. So here, you can choose, for example, my source is order, that is TA, from sales order. I need to create a business activity that is uh, appointment, let's say 0000.
So ideally this entry is not there. That is from sales order you can create a complaint. From sales order you can create a returns. So from uh, sales order you can create another sales order. Likewise it is shown. So that's what it's 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 written here. The copying control it's not that much important when you want to do a follow up control. When you are creating an order and from there when you are flowing for a customer visit you don't need to have this copy control. In the same way when you necessarily want to have a copy control you can have it. That's what it says. Customizing copy control is possible but not necessary. Ideally the system will allow you to create a follow up activity or business activity from any transaction. This is the next uh, uh, function available in uh, activity management that is the integration of questionnaires. In the initial uh, before and hour I was trying to show you a uh, questionnaire using CR on the client. So it's right now it's opened. So it was taking some time. So this is a business activity say appointment. In the appointment when you are meeting the customer in the appointment transaction screen you can have a feedback. Say like could you please evaluate the education value of the conference. If it is the customer says excellent, you can choose it as excellent. If it is the customer says as per the response like good or poor, you can choose it then and there. And you can ask the registration process on site, is it poor or excellent? You can choose the numbering. And how would you rate the overall quality of the speaker? You can ask the customer and you can edit then and there. And you can save it, save the entries. So that immediately, I mean, you can take the feedback from the customer by setting questionnaires. That's the use of using these questionnaires. So how you can integrate these questionnaires? So there are several types of questionnaires. It can be a customer satisfaction, what I have shown you in the screen. It can be customer visit evaluation. After the customer visit, you can evaluate. I mean, how was the visit? Or you can take customer survey for a specific product. So likewise, you can do several things for questionnaires. To maintain all these questionnaires, there is a place in customizing. So under transaction, settings for activities, there is business activities. So here under the settings for business activities, you can see questionnaires. So here you can actually define a questionnaire how the screen should be, what are the questions needs to be asked, what are the options for the answer, is it a narrative answer or is it a selectable answer, all everything you can define it under this part. In your company if you want to design your own questionnaires you can design it. So let's say there are several functionalities where you can use the questionnaire. For us we are using for activities, so let's go to business activities. So here already you have few questionnaires, standard questionnaires already there for customer satisfaction you have say like uh, the same way like customer request, request for qualification like this or if you want to create your own you can create by using this button you can create your own. So when, once you click this you will be getting a wizard. In that wizard you will enter what is the questioner name and the description and after that you need to enter that question and you need to have some values for the question like you, you should use radio buttons to choose the option or it should be a uh, narrative thing so all those things you can see. For example, I am choosing this customer satisfaction. I just want to show you how the customer satisfaction looks like. So in the customizing, we have designed this customer satisfaction, like overall value of the conference, how do you rate the registration process, how do you rate the overall quality of the speaker. So everything is customized under this layer. So because of this only, in the web client, you can see the same thing under the customer satisfaction survey you can see it here all the things. Now you can appreciate I mean how these questionnaires are very much useful. So once you have created this questionnaire you need to assign this questionnaire to a specific transaction type. So that's the next level. You can assign it to a business activity or else you can assign it to a task. Both are transaction types only. 
So let's say for example, determination of questionnaires for business activities. <coughs> so here, Questionnaire IDs, these are questionnaire IDs. Let's take customer satisfaction here. On the other side, you have the transaction types. For example, 0000, zero, zero, zero is the appointment we know. The transaction type 000, zero, zero means appointment we know. So, likewise, if you want to include our transaction, you can include. See, for example, I'm just copying this. We know our transaction right now, we have created. This Y Y Y Y. I'm going to maintain this, and you can set as mandatory. For example, if you want, if you don't enter this uh, questionnaire, then uh, it won't allow you to save. So likewise, you can do it if you want. Okay. So let's open our transaction now, same transaction. This is our one, yeah this is our one, now you won't see any questionnaires, so you need to go back, because it needs to take a refresh, what are the customizing we have done, I mean the system needs to have a refresh, so just go back and come again. And create our business activity. We know the business activity as uh, YY. Here it is. Yeah, YY appointment. This is the new transaction that we created. <coughs> We're just giving, for example, the same upselling. Appointment activity partner three two seven three and four six one employee and go to the questionnaires straight away. So there is nothing but the previous organization is asking, it's uh, not required right just now, I mean for our testing not required. If you want you can maintain it here, the organizations directly. And directly go on you can maintain any organizations. Let's go to the questionnaires. So you need to select any of the questionnaires, otherwise the system won't allow you to save because we have set this as a mandatory. So let's take excellent, four, no comments.
So whenever the agent is talking to the customer, I mean directly he can make the uh, questionnaires, ask the survey, get the feedback and enter it immediately. That's the functionality used in survey. So that's the usage of this survey. You can have multiple survey also. Here you have only one survey, for example, this drop down button. If you have, you can maintain two to three more surveys also, but just by clicking this drop down button and selecting the specific survey, you will get the specific layout for entering the survey. That's also possible. If you want to maintain, you can maintain. Just want to show you how does it works. Let's go to this level. Define information questions for business activity. <coughs> Let's take any one, say like uh, this one. Just copying it and I'm changing my transaction type to our transaction type. I'm just giving it information number, enter and save. So now what happened is when you open this a new transaction appointment, right now you can see only one option. Let's go back. I'm not saving the transaction. Now open again. Let's create a new business activity appointment which you have created. The new transaction with a new transaction type. It's not that I mean I, I'm using GUI. You can you can try this in the web client also. Finally, you can if you want you can try it in the client. here let's directly move to the questionnaire part so now you can see two surveys that is two questionnaires one have we have set as mandatory without that it won't allow you to save the business activity the other one is new questionnaire. I am just clicking this as the other one. So even the other one for example they have copied the same thing. If any new layer is there I mean it will show the a new layer but they have actually they copied the same the same thing they have copied and they have renamed it. So that's why you are getting the same uh, screen again just want to try you uh, show you that you can have more options in the feedbacks in surveys same thing can try it in uh, web client also it's open an activity you can go it here and can create or directly can create activities from here also see like I want to create an appointment So it will show all the appointment related activities. So I'm choosing this one. This is our appointment. Why by appointment? So under this, you can enter the descriptions like upselling, location, for example, Bangalore, importance, this immediate dot we have set in the default, or you can change it also, not a problem and category that is why by appointment what you have said and here the private we have actually deactivated that's why it's not allowing to make a check here you can enter the contact that is a customer ID activity partner you can enter the uh, 
uh, contact who is the contact person you can enter the employee responsible and when you go down then in questionnaire you can see no so why you are not able to see means it is not under the personalization it has been hidden the questionnaire assignment block is I am choosing this questionnaire to come up. So right now from available assignment blocks it has moved to displayed assignment blocks. Now it will be displayed. So I just want to move this assignment to up. It's next to or above notes or above attendance and see. Just give it some time, it will get refresh screen and you can see the questionnaire tab. So now you can see the questionnaire tab and even it shows there are two options. So I'm just opening this questionnaire if you want. So it opens the questionnaires. So this is the way of handling in CRM of the client. More or less is the same, functionality is the same, but only the look and feel get uh, differs in working in GUI and in uh, CRM of the client. So with the whole concept, everything is the same only. And there are uh, some more functions under the business activity. is called activity journals. So this activity journals, uh, what, is, uh, what is the importance of the activity journal is, say when you are meeting the customer, okay, and when you are meeting the customer, within the transaction itself, it will show some products. Say like uh, when you are meeting with the customer, you need to discuss some 10 to 5 products. So all those products will be listed under the transaction. So whenever you talk, you can uh, discuss, say for example, this product XT2006, you have discussed, so you will make a check mark, a number of samples you have given to the customer, you can maintain 8, and priority is high. I mean, in this, you need to push this product for somehow, that's why you are making as priority is high. And another product, you have discussed this with the customer, and you have given the number of samples too. So likewise, you can make an entry immediately for the product related things. I mean, you can maintain products or you can maintain product categories also under this. So with activity journals, you can record and update information gathered from customer visit or telephone calls for the products which are you have discussed. And you can set some notes also like customer is considering ordering X2006 in second quarter of 2007, like that you can set in notes. That's the uh, usage of this uh, activity journals. So if you want to see an activity journal tab. can choose any business activity which is having with the product. So for example, let's take a business activity products. Is an is another transaction type where you can see this activity in general. Yeah, this is a business activity. So under the tabs you can see a new tab called activity journals. So I am clicking this. So under this activity journals there are some products which you need to discuss with the customer. That's why you already maintain these products. If you want you can enter new more, more products also just for discussion purpose. And here you can say like you have discussed or not everything can check it out and uh, what is the sales unit you are uh, expecting and what is the number of sample you have given everything you can mention it then and there when you are discussing with the customer that's the main usage of this uh, activity journal just a tab where you can maintain product or the categories which you want to discuss and below itself you have the text types 
for example if you want to maintain a text that uh, for this uh, notebook I want to maintain a text you can enter it here this is also possible so that's what it says so the information in the activity journal may or may not be a product related for example an activity journal can contain the following information say like uh, the type and number of products discussed with the customers or sample handed with the customers so all these things related things you can maintain it within under this activity journal that's the only main functionality for this activity journal uh, Pravi? yes uh, can you uh, stop it last year uh, tell me again more sir can you uh, can we continue tomorrow this plan is like oh okay okay okay, okay. not a problem not a problem okay. fine thank you yeah Sarana is it okay for you right yeah okay okay fine uh, tomorrow we'll discuss I mean not a problem sure and uh, okay. yeah and uh, Saran, I mean uh, you have asked me the question actually how still how many hours we have we have right yeah correct correct so it might be uh, what I'm showing you this is the time sheet I'm recording each day so till now uh, we have covered around 36 hours so still we need to complete the activity management action by team within the CRM step and which will come around day to 11 hours so we have uh, 11 more hours to complete okay mm -hmm. okay Fine then, thanks. Uh, I will uh, share this document. Okay, tomorrow, thank you. Tomorrow we will have the class at the same time. Shall you have the class tomorrow at the same time or a little earlier? Because tomorrow is Saturday. Any any suggestions or we can have the class at 8 18? No, uh, a little bit early it will be good, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. I am feeling the same. So, shall I make it? Seven? Is it okay or six? Just, just give me any suggestion, not a problem. Seven to nine is better. Okay. How about you, Monal sir? Seven to nine is fine. Fine, Monal. Okay then. Then uh, we'll organize the class at seven. Thanks for okay. okay. Yeah. Bye. Okay. Thanks. The org